Well, we want to greet you in the name of Jesus. Amen. The name above every name. Amen. That's Jesus. There's power in that name. How many know tonight that you are born again? Amen. The Bible says we ought to be able to rejoice. That's right. We ought to be able to rejoice to know our name's written in the land. Anybody can rejoice? <laughs> Amen. I tell you what, I had a couple guys uh, many years ago profess the call to preach, young boys in the church, Brother Ernie, and uh, they'd go, they got saved, got born again. Not long after that, God called them to preach and uh, headed back to high school, Brother Nathan, and uh, began to witness and began to tell folks what happened. And, uh, some of the teachers and some of them said, well, I don't know about all that mo emotionalism. I don't know about all that emotion. You know what I told them? You go back and tell your teacher, don't get on the same cloud I'm on. Because I got something to worship the Lord for. Amen. I, somebody said, preacher, what do you say from? I don't have to die and go to hell. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't have to go to hell. Thank God he saved me. Well, it's been good this week. My days have run together. But it's been good this week. And I appreciate every church that has backed the meeting. Uh, we appreciate you. I'm telling you, all services have just been wonderful. Somebody was asking me today how the services were going. I told them I was getting revival. I hope everybody else is. But see, you, you get as much as you put in. And uh, so whatever you put into it, be what you'll get out of it. Um, and I, you know, revival, when you call for a revival, we call this camp meeting. But it's revival. And uh, when, when we ask for revival, it means we're at a place... Now, it's sad that every year we have to schedule it for the same time. You know, I got to think about revival. We shouldn't just have revival a spring, right. amen, and, and, and a summer or fall. Uh, we ought to have it, amen, when we need it. But, you know, unfortunately, by this time next year, you're going to need it. <laughs> but it shouldn't be that way. We don't have to get there right. if we'll stay prayed up. But I sure do like the good preaching of the word and the good singing and uh, good testimonies. Uh, the Lord's blessed it. I thank God for, for growing the camp meeting. Now, when I say growing, it is 
good to see uh, numberly, uh, but I thank God the spiritual end. Amen. Uh, there's a lot of churches you can go into and you don't have the presence of God. And let's welcome him here tonight, amen, in God's house. Uh, again, all the churches, we appreciate you. It's good to have Charles and Abigail David with us. Would you and your family stand? They are missionaries to India. Missionaries to India. Amen. Thank you. Uh, they're going to be in our morning service and going to be singing some, I think, in the morning. Um, uh, so we just, uh, he made sure he said his family would sing. Okay. Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you for that. And uh, uh, we, if uh, the Lord don't come, uh, we've got Brother Jeff Burchett. He pastors the West Court Baptist Church. Uh, he'll be with us in the morning. And uh, Brother Noah Davis, stand up, Noah. Brother Noah Davis will be doing the preaching in the morning. Amen. Ain't that good? Hallelujah. Thank you, Brother Noah. Uh, God would not let me schedule a second preacher to put on that flyer. And I said, okay, Lord. And uh, God knows what he's doing. And all week, he, he became, he's be, the Lord kept putting him on my mind. All week. Lord, who? And the Lord confirmed that tonight. I just love him. Amen. We're going to start off our service with prayer. Do pray for the Ricky Club family. Uh, we did visit with them just a little while this morning. But you pray for uh, pray for Krista and, and Kevin and uh, that family. Uh, a lot of you here know uh, Brother Rick's family. Um, but anyway, pray for them. A lot to pray about. Let's stand to our feet, if you will. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. We'll ask uh, God's blessings upon this service tonight, okay? Uh, Brother Jerry McLean, thank you for being with us. He brought a wonderful message uh, this week in the morning, one of the morning services. And um, I tell you, that when I say it's been out of banks, I'm talking about it in my heart. It might not have been out of banks in some people's heart. Uh, but I've sat on that front pew and God's fed me. And uh, I'm glad when we pull up under the table of God. And he'll give us what we need when we need it. Amen. Would you take us to the throne of grace, brother? Amen, amen. I tell you what, you're standing. Let me have the ushers to come around. Everything you give tonight goes to Brother Nathan. Okay? It's not filtered through this church, as we've said all week. Every dime you give will go to Brother Nathan. Okay? So uh, you pray for him. Anybody here never heard Brother Nathan Jennings? Never heard Brother Nathan. We got a few people that's never heard Brother Nathan. Um, God's really touched my brother. And I'll make more uh, introduction in just a little while. Uh, but it's good to have him with us. It's good to have uh, the Joy Heirs with us uh, from Harriman, Tennessee. They've been with us all week, morning and evening. It's good to have the Parsons family from Goshen, Indiana. Been with us morning and evening service. And uh, I, I just, uh, I'm just so thankful and, uh, for what God's uh, blessed this church with. Uh, I tell you, there, you ought to thank God for some good singing. Good old-fashioned gospel singing. Some people, don't, some people don't like me saying that, but let me tell you something. Then you take the book of Psalms out. 
Now, see, some some people don't like. Uh, I was in a, I was visiting a church with me and my family were singing at a big uh, Baptist church for homecoming one time, and he said, "I I tell you what," and he said, uh, "We don't clap around here." Now, let me just stop right there. Uh, we don't clap around here for entertainment. If you clap around here, you ought to clap to worship the Lord and give Him glory. And I thought to myself then, uh, he said, it's a move of Hollywood. Well, I'll have to agree with that to a point. It is. But as long as we're worshiping God, as long as we're worshiping God, amen, hallelujah, thank the Lord. Uh, But man don't need exalted. As long as we can leave this service tonight and he's lifted up. He's exalted. He's magnified. Everything you give in this offering goes to Brother Nathan. Amen. Play while they bring the offering place. Come on. Joy Ayers, come on. Miss Debbie and, and Miss uh, Sharon. Amen. Come on. on.
And there were so many people on it, there wasn't room for me and my sister. But aren't you glad there's always room at the cross? I was on a pew up in the choir, and she was on a pew over here on the side. We got saved almost instantaneously. Oh, right. My daddy picked her up and literally threw her in the air. And she hung off the Thank you. She's outstripped us in going home. One of these days. Bless you, Lord Jesus.
Moore song. And uh, I, Deb don't sing on this song, but I want her to stay up here with me. Uh, this uh, Bless the Lord. I, uh, some of you folks have maybe have heard me say this. This is one song that I cannot remember the words to. Uh, can't remember it to save me. And, uh, but uh, Deb and I, this Christmas, will have been married for 54 years. And, uh, the Lord didn't bless us with children. And it's just been she and I all these years. Brother Jeff, we've done everything together. Uh, grocery shopping. Everything. We're, we're hardly ever apart. And uh, but one of these days, one of us is going to be very sad. And we, our family has had our share of sadness, seems like, in the last little bit. But as Brother Nathan said, ask him how he was, and he said, all I can say is God is good. Amen. Now watch him sitting here with his mom. My mom still lives by herself, 91 years old. And I told him the other night, as long as she's alive, Brother Jerry, I know we've got somebody praying for us. I don't have to worry. I know we've got somebody praying for us. But you folks here this week have been so kind to us. And I, I, I want to sing this song. And if you hear, Brother Jerry, that I've died, don't you believe? Like 
for the joy heirs. All right. You pray for the Parsons family as they come. Amen. And share some song with us tonight. Hallelujah. I'm looking forward to heaven. How many can pray right now? Come quickly, Lord Jesus. Now, I got some lost loved ones I'd like to see saved. Amen. But I'm telling you, I can pray in my heart tonight. Come quickly, Lord. That's about the joy years. I do. Before he made that that comment of not having any children, I thought, you know, I think they're old enough to be my mom and daddy. <laughs> I think I'm an adopter. <laughs> the sweetest people you'll ever want to meet. Amen. The sweetest people. I walked up on stage. I made mention this morning about a, a sister-in-law and her. Brother, they had just taken him off of life support, and, and uh, before I made it back down to my seat, he has passed. And, uh, Brother Ernie asked me about that. That touches me. Yeah, yeah, I don't know about you, but when somebody's concerned, when they pay attention to things that hurt you, right. and they love you. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So, Brother Ernie, Sister Deb, I love y'all so much, and so yeah. what an honor it is always to be with you. And I was yeah. going to say work with you, but we are not working or ministry yeah, right. together. Yeah. Yeah. Until he comes. And, uh, man, have you heard a voice like Brother Ernie's? Yeah. And then when they love on each other and yeah. they hold each other so tight. Oh, my Lord. I love it. Thank you for that godly example. Yeah. Yeah. Husband and wife should love and serve together. I love that. I'm so thankful. Well, Miss Avery's come back tonight. She's going to sing a song for you. says, he loved me like I was his only child. Oh, I'm sorry, the wrong one. Oh. What's it called? The only thing you bought was me. There we go. <laughs> <laughs>
afraid to fly. I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> We've been invited to go to Africa, to Uganda. And um, we're praying over that. I would, I would ask for you to pray with us, too, yes. that we would seek God's direction and add to Him. We just feel like it would be an opportunity of a lifetime to go over. And uh, I'm looking for God to just do something wonderful in yeah. our ministry to change. Uh, maybe our desire a little bit more. They told a story of, um, I, I believe they were playing a game with some of them over there, a uh, pastor and his congregation, several of them went, and they, they laid out shoes, and they laid out beans and rice, and they laid out Bibles. It was during COVID, and they said that um, they were handing out beans and rice. It was so hard to come by food. And one of the, the bags ripped, and they were down picking up beans out of the dirt. So it was pretty important, that beans and rice. And as they were playing the game that day, they said every time the kids would answer a question, right, they got to go over and pick a prize. Do you know what they chose first? The Bibles. I sat there in the restaurant when they told us that, and I just bawled. Sometimes we leave our Bibles in church on the ground. We can go out to eat anytime we want to. But they are so hungry for the Word of God. That even children, they took over 5,000 pairs of shoes. Is that right? And maybe they didn't have any. But they chose the Word of God. And that just did something to me. So you all pray for us. Uh, that God would direct us. If that's His will, that we, we do that. I'm thankful that I was raised in a good godly church. Mom and Daddy loved the Lord, never heard him go home and fry the preacher uh, on the way home. We had fried chicken instead. Amen. <laughs> My friend wrote this song, and I want to do this for you. I just feel like um, I'm thankful for the way that, that I was raised in, a, in the old-fashioned way. Amen. That uh, the King James Bible was the only thing that was read at our house. It's the only thing that would be read in our house. Anything else, I don't understand it. I can see it on Facebook, and I try to read it, and it just doesn't do anything for me. I'm sorry if that's your version, uh, but I love the King James. I to still be able to come into the house of God and raise my hands to God, and to be able to sing the songs of Zion and to worship the King of God. This song is going to ask you a question tonight. Somebody tell me what's wrong with the old fashioned.
Good job, ladies and gentlemen. Amen. How many enjoyed the Parsons family? Praise the Lord. I love good singing, but there's nothing that takes place of the Word of God. Every song that was sung, if you listened, had a message in it to you. I'm glad I was raised the old-fashioned way. I'm glad I cut my teeth. Amen. When I say that spiritually, I know what it is to worship the Lord. And this generation we're living in today, if they don't see what I saw, and they don't experience what I experienced, you better start praying for our churches. You better start praying for the men behind the pulpits in these churches. Let me tell you something. I want them to see what I grew up on. Amen. Um, but anyway, I'm not going to preach. It's good to have Brother Nathan Jennings with us. He pastors the First Free Will Baptist Church there in Elizabethan, Tennessee. And he just reminded me, the good Lord uh, led our paths cross at this camp meeting in 2006. He came down, I believe he was pastor at Keystone at that time. Or it might have been Unicoi. It was actually Unicoi. Uh, but anyway, I uh, appreciate my brother. Uh, anybody here never heard Brother Nathan? Never heard Brother Nathan? Several several folks. Come on, preacher, and you just be obedient. Now listen, uh, you've been patient, and you've sat there and heard some good gospel music. Uh, if you can shout at that, you can shout at the man of God and preaching of the word of God. You pray for him tonight. Brother Kenny, bless your heart, honey. You're my hero. I'm going to start coming to his closet. <laughs> Sharp dressed men all around. Amen. I'm going to borrow some of their clothing. Well, it's good to be here. I appreciate the sweet spirit of the Lord. Great to be with the joy heirs again, Brother Ernie and Sister Debbie. And, and uh, Brother Ernie may beat me. For this, I don't have Facebook. Everybody knows that by now. Uh, the Facebook jail story. I'm in it indefinitely. <laughs> but I get on dawns every now and then. <laughs> if you've got Facebook, how many have Facebook have Messenger tied to it? Anyways, every day, Brother Ernie, uh, man, since my sickness, the very first thing that comes across Dawn's phone in the morning is that they're praying for us. And I appreciate that. And I thank God for them. And the Parsons, man, I love them. And been in some good services with them. I'm looking forward, though, to when we fly away. And spend forever and a day with King Jesus. And with one another. Great to meet this dear family, each one. I'm so, listen, I wish I could have been here for more services. But do you know how hard it is to drive this? Uh, from Tennessee over here by myself, I'd have never made it. I appreciate my mama and sister Valerie and sister Sheila. They, they're my cheerleaders and, and my, they drive me to all the meetings and I appreciate that. And uh, brother Brandon, he's always great to show up and support me and and all the preachers, listen, all of you, you're my heroes. And I thank God for each one, everybody. I could spend, I could just spend the next hour talking about y'all. But I want to magnify King Jesus. He said, the Bible says in John 12, 32, he said, if I be lifted up from the earth, he said, I'll draw all men unto me. I still believe that 2,000 years later, if we'll lift him up, he'll still do the drawing. I'm not nervous tonight. I'm scared to death. I want to ask you to turn to a few places in the Word of God. If you have your Bibles, go with me to the book of Galatians, chapter number 2. And I'll give you time to find these. Galatians chapter number 2 at verse 20. And then we're going to go to... 
Galatians chapter number 5 at verse number 24. And all these are, are well-known passages of Scripture. I'd say that everybody probably has these memorized. And then Matthew 27 at verse number 36. And I'm going to read Galatians 2.20, Galatians 5.24, and then we're going to spend most of our time in, in the message in the Gospels. Uh, I'll not have you flipping around or, or, or I don't want to take too much time. Uh, everything that I share with you, uh, is, it's not new, uh, but I'm going to spend quite a bit of time in the Gospels. The Bible says in Galatians 2 at verse number 20, says, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. Galatians 5.24 And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections or the passions and lusts or strong desires. And then Matthew 27 verse 36 And sitting down, they watched Him there. I'm going to ask... Uh, Brother Jeff, would you pray for me, preacher? Heavenly Father, as we call upon your name, we thank you, God, again, for the goodness of God. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. God, to be able, dear Lord, now, Lord, to hear the word of God. We ask God that you touch my brother. Lord, you help him, God, give him liberty and the good unction of the Holy Spirit. God, to preach to us tonight, we ask God that you bring back, Lord, to his mind, the remembrance, dear God, of that that he studied. God, I pray that you give him strength in his body. God, I pray, Father, if there's any loss tonight, Lord, walking upon all, we pray, God, that this day and hour may be that day and hour. Lord, they find their way to an order of repentance. God, get things right with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to do my best to share my heart with you tonight and give you what the Lord has laid on my heart. I, I don't want to be a burden. I want to be a blessing tonight. And I have, even though I have not got to attend the service, services uh, in person, I have went back and watched them in the morning and in the evening, and I've been fed and I've been helped, and I thank God for it. Amen. But the last thing that this preacher ever wants to do is just kill a meeting. Amen. I remember one time, preachers, have you ever been preaching? And uh, you preach them what God gives you. But then it seems like, Brother Colby, that God just opens up your mind and He starts pouring it in. And one time, Brother Kenny, I was about at the 25-minute, 30-minute mark on a Wednesday night having myself a time. And I was preaching and it seemed like God just opened up my mind and even when I tried to get done, God wouldn't let me. Have you ever been there? And so anyway, or have you ever experienced your preacher doing that? And I got to preach and I said, man, I'm trying to land this plane. I kept on preaching, Sister Olivia. And then I went about another five minutes and I kept on preaching. I said, I'm circling the field. And I kept on preaching about ten minutes later. I said, I'm trying to land this plane. I had a deacon stand up. He said, just go ahead and crash it, preacher. <laughs> Honest truth, I couldn't tell you that what I was supposed to say next, so we just went ahead, wrapped it up, and went to the house. <laughs> but I do want to be sensitive to the Holy Ghost. Now the Bible, the Bible it's a different thought tonight. The Bible says in Galatians 2.20, now I love the entire Word of God. I love, I love Genesis 1.1 1, 1 to Revelation 22.21. I love it all. I love the concordance. I love the maps. I love it all. I love my little ribbon that's hanging from my Bible. I like it all. And, uh, but if I had to have a life verse or a, or a favorite verse, it would be Galatians 
2.20 and it says I am crucified with Christ that means I have died to self and I have been buried with Christ but I have risen to walk in the newness of life now I know to the believer I know to my brothers and my sisters if I say that I have been crucified with Christ you understand that terminology if you have been saved and washed in the blood of the Lamb and your name has been written down in the Lamb's book of life, you know what it's like to take off the old coat and to put on the new coat. You know to have the old Adam nature crucified and the old Adam nature laid to rest. Amen. He who was dead have been quickened. Amen. How many is glad that you've been saved? How many is glad that you've been born again? You've been adopted into the family of God. You have been regenerated. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. I'm glad tonight that the old man is dead. I'm glad that we don't have to be what we used to be. We don't talk how we used to talk. We don't walk like we used to walk. We don't go to the same places we used to go. We don't hang out with the same people that we used to hang out with. You're watching better programs. You're reading better books. You find yourself in an old fashioned Amen. Holy Ghost. Praise God. Filled house of God. Amen. Reading the King James Bible. Amen. Old fashioned Holy Ghost. Singing. Sweating. So I praise God, aisle running, pew jumping, gravy, gravy eating, biscuit sopping, preacher. Ain't nothing like it, hallelujah. I love the old time world. And so you've been crucified, but now to this world, if you said, oh, I'm dead. I'm dead to the flesh. I'm dead to self. I've been crucified. They say, how can you be crucified and yet still alive? Yeah. Well, it's what's on the inside. Yeah. I heard an old man of God, a dear man of God years ago by the name of Morris Mounts. I was about seven or eight years old. I'm, I'll be 44 in December. I got saved when I was seven, June the 7th, 1987. 12 or 3 at night time by my bedside, my dear mother led me to the Lord Jesus Christ. I ain't never got over it. Amen. I'm like Brother Jeff, stay off my cloud. Hallelujah. Amen. Hey, I hate when somebody as big as God moves on the inside of somebody as little as you and me, he's going to stick out. He's going to show up somewhere. He said everybody, every man, every woman, in their heart they have a throne. And he said... If you're on the throne, Jesus is on the cross. He said, but if you're on the cross, Jesus is on the throne. Listen, if you are on the throne of your heart, if you're leading and guiding and directing your own life, Amen. Hey, listen, any time that I've tried to do it my way, any time I tried to fix any situation, amen, and I hey, and I went I went by what Nathan did, or by what Nathan says or does or knows. Amen. I didn't do nothing but flop. But it was a good glad day in my life when I let him not just be Savior of my life, but be the Lord of my life. So the Bible says that we've been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, we live. And it's not us, but it's Christ that lives in us. And then the Bible says in the life which we now live in the flesh, we live by faith in the Son of God. Amen. Who loved us and gave Himself for us. Now the Bible says again, I'm just using this as a springboard. It says if we live in the Spirit, or excuse me, and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. If we live in the Spirit, let us walk in the Spirit. And then the Bible says this in Matthew 27, 36, and sitting down, they watched him there. I've been thinking, Brother Anderson, about Calvary. 
I've been thinking, Brother Jerry, about the cross and about the scene there. And, and, uh, and the other night, God moved upon my heart a couple of weeks ago and I was thinking about the cross of Calvary. And, and, and I know, I know to look at the cross. I know to see the passion of Christ. I know that it is a picture of death. But when I look at the cross, I see a pattern of how we ought to live our life. You say, preacher, what do you mean? I've always said this. I can remember several years ago, I was going through a low place. Amen. And I tell you what, the the devil knows how to work on the minds of a child of God. And the devil really knows how to push the buttons of a preacher. Now, I can't speak for every man of God, but there's been a whole lot of Sunday evenings and Monday mornings that I've resigned. Amen. There's been, hey, especially the last year, I, I thought, man, I ain't, no, I ain't no count to nobody. I can't be a help to nobody. I might as well just get out of it. But I'm thankful that God would let me. Amen. Amen. I know that the devil has some power, but God has all power. Amen. He said, all power is given unto me both in the heaven and the earth. Amen. 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 I'm glad I'm part of Team Jesus, Sister Angel. And so, anyways, I I got to thinking about the cross, and and I know that it's a a, a a picture of death, but a pattern of life. And I remember on a Wednesday afternoon, about 15 years ago, I told my papa I I was pastoring in Johnson City at the time, and I went, and Papa said, "Boy, you seem heavy-hearted." I said, "I'm done." I, I, I said, I said, Papa, I, I read, I study, I preach my heart out, and it seems like it ain't getting. It seems like it don't. It seems like all I'm doing is preaching to the wall. I think I'll just quit. Papa said, I think that'd be good, son. That's what you need to do. He said, Man, I'd just get out of it if I was you. I said, That's what I'm going to do. He said, I just wouldn't go back to that church. I said, Bless God, I ain't. He said, I wouldn't even pick up the Bible and try to preach no more. I said, that's what I'm talking about, Papa. He said, yeah, I'd just go ahead and quit on the Lord. And I said, what? And he said, yeah, he said, you know, he said, I, I, he said remember when Jesus was going to the cross of Calvary, he said, you know, he stopped and, he, and he, he, he questioned and he guessed and he thought about quitting. He said, but aren't you glad that he didn't? And I said, Papa, Jesus never quit. He said, that's right. Said he, had, said he never questioned, he never contemplated, he never said the only thing that might have been in the negative, he said, which it wasn't, he said, but was when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, and he said, if there is any other way, he said, let this cup pass from me, he said, not my will, but thy will be done. He said, so just go ahead, son, and quit on God. I said, well, you know, maybe some other time. I plan on going tonight and preaching. <laughs> and Papa said something, and I kind of adopted it, Brother Jerry, for the last rest of my ministry. I've been at first for 13 years. And, uh, and, I, and I've thought about that. He died for me. Here's the message. He died for me. I should live for Him. Amen. He died for you. You ought to live for Him. Amen. Amen. Hey, I'm telling you, God has never been bad to me. God has never one time done me wrong. On the worst days of my life has still been wonderful. Amen. Because I still have the joy of the Lord. I'm glad we still have the joy of the Lord. We can have a peace that passes all understanding. Even when we don't understand it all, I'm glad we can have a peace in the midst of it all. So the Bible says, sitting there, they watched him. And I've thought about it. I mean, he's already been, he's already been arrested. He has been before Caiaphas. He's been before Pilate. He has had, he, the Bible says that he's turned his back towards the smiters. The Bible lets us know, preacher, that they have took and they plated, plated the crown of thorns upon his brow. They have took the cat of nine tails and beat him uh, beyond recognition. Uh, they have plucked the beard from his face. They have spit 
in his face. I mean, uh, they, they, there ain't never been one person go through anything like Jesus. Anybody, I don't even know if it's still a show. Anybody ever see that show? It's a dirty job, but somebody's got to do it. I'm telling you, it was, a, it was a hard job. It was a gruesome job. It was a dirty job, but somebody had to do it, and I wouldn't have survived it, and you wouldn't have survived it, but I'm glad that Jesus is the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. And so they looked at him, and they watched him. And you know, I, I've thought about that. They've took the nails and they've pierced his hands and they've took the nails and pierced his feet. And, and uh, I mean, now he's been lifted up. Now he's hanging between heaven and earth. And everybody's watching him. Where's all the disciples? We do know that John the Beloved's there. We do know that Mary the mother of Jesus was there. But you know what? They tried to find fault in him, but they couldn't find any. See, when I, when I got to thinking, Brother Colby, about how Jesus died and it being a pattern of how we live, there's five things that stuck out to me. He died forgiving others. So I want to live forgiving others. I mean, here it is. They, I mean, Judas said, he said, I've sinned and that I have betrayed. Not innocent blood. He said, the innocent blood. Pilate couldn't find no fault in him. I mean, three times Pilate washed his hands. Even the Roman soldier, the centurion, he said, truly, surely, this man was the Son of God, is the Son of God. But they just seen him as human. But they still couldn't find nothing wrong. See, where, where did they do wrong? They did wrong and that they murdered somebody who was innocent. But he said, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they do. He wasn't talking about they're crucifying an innocent man. He said, they just don't realize that I'm the Son of God. They don't realize that I'm the Savior of the world. And the very first thing we hear from his lips is, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. I mean, He's dying for every one of us. He's dying for the, for the souls of mankind. He's dying for every sin that was, is, or ever will be because He died for them all. Amen. Paul said this in 1 Timothy 1.15. He said this is a faithful saying and it's worthy of all acceptation. Christ Jesus came in the world to save sinners for who I'm chief. He who was rich became poor that we might be made rich. Amen. He who knew no sin became sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God. And so he died forgiving others. What a testimony. What a witness. Amen. And, and I mean, listen, we're told in the Word of God if someone smites you on the cheek to turn the other cheek. But I'm telling you, and I, I, I don't know if anybody, maybe everybody else has arrived. Amen. And your super spiritual brother or sister and you don't have no problem forgiving folk. But I'm telling you what, if you've ever been done wrong, if your family's been done wrong, if they've tried to do everything like, I mean, ruin your name and smear it in the mud, or if it, hey, maybe it's in your family, maybe it's been in a church, maybe it's been at the workplace, maybe it's been on a ball team, maybe, hey, I don't know, but I guarantee that everybody under the sound of my voice sometime along life's way, you have been done wrong. Wrong. And you know what? You're supposed to forgive. No matter what they did, how they did it, how bad it hurt, who it was against, you're supposed to forgive. And listen, you know what? If you don't forgive somebody, it don't hurt them, it hurts you. You hold on to hurt long enough, bitter long enough, resentment long enough. But listen, I'm telling you, hey, it's easy for me to preach this. But oh, in 20 years of preaching, it's been hard to practice it sometimes. I know. I mean, just think about Brother Stephen in Acts chapter number 6. There Saul is holding the coats of those that stoned him. And I mean, they're stoning him, Brother Brandon, for preaching the gospel. And Stephen in his dying breath said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And seen Jesus standing at the Father's right hand. You know, I know a preacher who 
we was in a meeting together and his wife had stopped at a grocery store going to bring some things home and before coming on to church and was parked there coming out of the parking lot and this little car came out of nowhere just a little rusty beat up car and just came out of nowhere and I mean knocked the front end of their uh, Honda Accord. I mean just about knocked it completely off. And uh, she called the brother and said, uh, I've just been hit and, and he just drove on and said car come out of nowhere. Said they just went on and we didn't call the police and there wasn't no insurance exchange or anything like that. Said, can you still make it to the house? Can you make it to church? She said, I, I think I can. It's still running. He said, take some pictures. Send me pictures of the car. And so I'm, I'm talking, Brother Jeff, the, the front end, I mean, it's dragging the ground. And so he goes on to have the meeting and she comes on to church. And I mean, you hear, I mean, sparks are flying. And so anyways, he... I spent some time with him later on. He said, you know what, Nathan? He said, this was not my fault. This was not my wife's fault. And he said, I, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pay the deductible. And he said, but there ain't no way that I'm going to drive around with my car looking like this. And said, I'm going to take it to somebody that I know can fix it. You know what? I guarantee you along life's way, everybody's been sideswiped sometime. Yeah. Amen. Somebody said something. Somebody's hurt your spirit. Amen. I mean, side swapped you. Why do you want to go through life, amen, carrying your bumper around when you know who you can take it to? You know where you can take it. And you know one who can fix any shape that you're in. He can take care of the scratches. He can take care of the dings. He can take care of anything. 2011, I had sinus surgery. Right after that, about two weeks later, I began to hemorrhage. And so they rushed me to the hospital. And, uh, and I was having a lot of things. I mean, goodness, that's been the story of my life with my health. But hallelujah, heaven will fix it all. Amen. And so anyways, I was having some issues with my heart. And Dawn said, now Nathan, you ain't supposed to be driving. But I had already left the house. I was driving. I don't drive right now. Well, I don't know if I'll ever get to drive again. But at the time, I had my Toyota Tundra, and it, 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 it's a Smurf blue. I must like Smurf blue. <laughs> Walker's blue, truck was blue. Well, Dawn had a, a van, a blue Dodge Caravan. She said, now, Nathan, I know you're nervous about going to see the heart doctor. She said, you just pull into my workplace, and you get in the van with me. I said, all right. Well, I swung in. Amen. And I took the whole side of her van out. <laughs> and, and about the front end of my truck. And Don said, what, have you, what are you doing? I said, I'm nervous about going to the doctor. <laughs> she said, so you just decide to side swipe me? I said, at least the colors match. <laughs> but we got a man in our church. That's a, a body man. Do anything. And I called him. I said, Brother Gary, I went and done messed up again. He said, what would you do, preacher? I said, I took the side out of Dawn's van. He said, well, preacher, I keep a can of your paint around. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's fixed the hood. He's put two headlights in, two, he two tail lights. I mean, how many sorry, just thank God I'm off the road now. <laughs> I mean, they've almost revoked my license of driving it. And so anyways, I said, can you fix the truck? Man, he fixed it like nothing ever happened. Amen. He, I took the van to Brother Gary and, and, and Brother Jeff, he took his thing out, looked like a hair dryer. And he put it up against the side of that door and it just popped right out. And he buffed it right out. Hey man, listen, I'm telling what I'm trying to tell you is there may be somebody here tonight that's hurting. There might be somebody here tonight that's got some knees and got some bumps and some bruises and you've been done wrong, but you're in the right place. There is one, hallelujah. There is one that can fix it all. 
He can take any mess, turn it into a miracle. He can take your brokenness and turn it into a blessing. That's what God can do. He said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. He died forgiving others. I want to live forgiving others. And then number two, he died with fervor. He had compassion. He, he loved people. I mean, he is doing, Brother Noah, he's doing the greatest work in all of humanity. The greatest job, the greatest task. He didn't come to do miracles. I'm glad he did. He didn't come to meet needs and feed full. And I'm glad he did. He did all that. But he come to die. He come to die, be buried, and rise again on that third day. That's why he came. And uh, so while he's up there, being the sacrifice, being the great high priest, being the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world, amen, amen. Uh, he stopped for a moment and he looked down at his sweet mother. And you know what? There, one of the things that bothers me about my mama, my mama's got macular degeneration. And she just about cannot see. She goes, and I'd like for everybody to help us pray. She goes to see another specialist in April. Or excuse me, what month are we in? I don't even know what, who I am. August, thank you. August the 14th on her birthday. And uh, she goes to see a specialist. But Mama could wake up tomorrow and be completely blind. I used to drive her to her appointments. Now she drives me to mine. And she says, son, what are we going to do? What are we going to do if I can't take you to your appointments? I said, I guess we'll call Uber. Amen. (laughs) We'll get Valerie Brandon. Somebody come get us. Amen. Because I don't know (laughs) the blind woman or the lame man. I don't know. I I don't know. It could be dangerous either way. Amen. I had a, I had a, brother Jerry, I got tickled. Uh, Sister Ned, I hope it didn't seem disrespectful. You all was a singing and me and Mama got tickled a minute because I felt like I had an eyelash right there. And I said, Mama, would you look and see if I have an eyelash? And she said, I mean, she can't even see what I look like. I mean, honest truth. And you say, well, you shouldn't make light of it. Listen, when you're dealing with stuff, Hey, you can cry enough. Hey, I'd rather rather find a little humor and smile along life's way. Hey, you can always see the good because I promise you there is always somebody who's got it a little worse off. Amen. Hey, I could not have no legs. I could be in a wheelchair 100% of the time. Hey man, mom does have a little bit of vision, but I, hey, it can always be worse. And so I'm always thinking about my mom. And right there, Jesus says, Woman, behold thy son, and son, behold thy mother. He was taking care of his mama because he had compassion, he had fervor. But you know what? He wasn't, they, they weren't the only two that got a blessing, they weren't the only two. A man that was shown compassion. The Bible says in Jude, uh, Jude one twenty five, some having compassion making the difference. Now, brother Kenny, I want to be careful. I, I all I know to do is pray that if it's God's will for you all to go to Uganda, that that God will just open the door and let you know. Amen. But I tell you, Sister Chloe, if He does open that door. And let you all go. I pray that He let you because you've got a compassionate heart and a loving heart and a giving heart and a ministering heart. Amen. And I pray God lets you all show so much compassion that even the lions and the giraffes get saved. Amen. Amen. I just threw that in there. Amen. Barney Five says giraffes are selfish. If you've seen that episode. So they need to get born again. Amen. If you ain't seen that, you need to go home and watch that episode. Amen. It'll help you. And so anyways, there was a thief. The second thief. Yes, sir. Another mill factor. He said, Lord, would you remember me 
When you come into your kingdom, he said, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. He didn't have to join a church. Amen. He didn't have to clean up. He didn't have to be baptized. Amen. Jesus said, You want to go? Hey, I'm the way. I'm the truth. I'm the life. If you want to go, I'll make sure you get in. By the way, the only way I get to go is because of Him. Only way you get to go is because of Him. We ain't good enough. We ain't righteous enough. Our righteousness is as filthy rags. Amen. But I'm glad we go because of Him. He, he, he died forgiven. He died with fervor. I want to live forgiven people. Amen. I want to live with fervor. I want to show compassion. Amen. Not everybody that you meet. You know what? My, my grandfather, you don't hear a lot of people say this anymore. My grandfather was a godly man. Some of you got to meet him before he went to heaven in 2010. But my papa said, if people would just be soul conscious. Ha, ha, have you heard? I mean, that everywhere you go, everybody you meet, amen, are either going to heaven or hell. And if we could be soul conscious, if we could realize the person we're standing behind at the Walmart or a person we're sitting beside at the doctor's office or the the fellow student at the desk next to us or what, if we would realize that not everybody has had the opportunity, amen, to be in church and hear the gospel, amen, like you've been given. It's precious family from India. And uh, I mean... My, 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 it's, if we could just sit down and talk about the doors that God's opened for y'all and the people that you've seen I'm saved and the lives that you've seen changed. And, and, uh, but, you, hey, I'll, I'll give you an example. They say, well, there in Tennessee, in Johnson City, Elizabethan area, that's the Bible Belt. It, Sister Angie, is it called the Bible Belt in this area too? North Carolina, you know, Western North Carolina and, and Tennessee, I don't know. But in our area, everybody, everybody, in our area, everybody's saved. They all saved. Man, we can't get nobody lost to get them saved. Amen. I mean, hey, everybody's going to heaven. I mean, did you know that, by the way, everybody gets to go to heaven, but not everybody gets to stay. Everybody will stand before God either at the judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne judgment. But I'm telling you, bless God, unless you've been washed in the red royal crimson blood, you ain't going to get to stay. I'm talking about being soul conscious. I'm, about, I'm talking about showing compassion. Anyways, it's been a couple of years ago and somebody's having a birthday party. I don't remember if it was at home, if it was at church. I don't remember. All I remember is I was supposed to go get the birthday cake with the, not the whipped cream icing, lard icing. Amen. I love the Lord and I love lard. Not that whipped cream stuff. Heavy lard icing with big roses on the corners. I like cake so good. I've, hey, I'm known to go to grocery stores, get a cake, and have written on there just because. <laughs> I mean, my mom in my line. I mean, in my line, hand on the Bible just because I want a cake. <laughs> Somebody's having a birthday somewhere. <laughs> Brother Jeff, I don't know why you let me come back. Amen. I pray. <laughs> I appreciate you. I blame a lot on the Lord and medication. <laughs> Anyways, I went through to get that cake and that woman said, you sure are dressed up, looking all handsome and everything. I said, well, thank you. I appreciate that. She said, why are you all dressed up for? I said, been church today. She said, man, you look like one of them preachers or something. I said, I am. And she said, well, that's, that's good. I said, you go to church? She said, nope. I said, okay. I said, have you ever been saved? You, know, you got a relationship with She said, saved from what? Oh. I'm talking about Tennessee yeah. where everybody knows about Jesus. Yeah. Where everybody's saved. Yeah. 
And I said, save from hell. She said, if there is a hell, she said, I'm living in it right now. And man, hey, I forgot about that cake. Amen. I tried to witness to her and tell her about King Jesus. I, somebody sent me a video, man, a month or two ago, I can't remember. And uh, was Pentecostal service, I don't know it, man, it, got, it was getting on like Donkey Kong and I liked it. And there was, I mean, preachers, there was like 50 preachers on the stage and there was this big preacher, uh, Brother Jeff something, big preacher, and he was talking about getting a haircut. And he was talking about having a, a barber that he's went to for years that he loved. And he said, when you're on the road, he said, you got to choose other barbers sometimes. He said, but anyways, he was home and he had called his barber. Said, you just come on in. I hope I'm telling this right. Said, you just come on in. I can fit you in today. Anyways, he showed up at his barber shop and he went in and somebody told him at the barber shop, said, so and so, your barber had to step out. Something unexpected come up. And he said, well, I'm here. Might as well go ahead and get a haircut. He said, this woman came up and had, had like striped pants on, polka dot pants on, striped shirt, socks didn't match, tennis shoes didn't match, had hair spiked up, all kinds of different colors, had like 50 piercings in her face and all that. And he said, oh my. And she called his name and he thought about saying he had to step out. <laughs> Anyways, this, if I can remember this right, said this, he was getting his hair cut and she said, what do you do for a living? And he said, I'm a preacher. Works, works at some kind of evangelistic center. She said, I just was there the other day. And he said, you, was that, that evangelistic center where I work? She said, yep. Yeah. She said, my mom is a dope addict. Said, I've got family that's on drugs. And she said, there's no hope. And she said, I went in looking for something to help. And, and long story short, he sat there. And this is a preacher. He said, and by the way, I guarantee every one of us as children of God, somewhere along the way, we've judged somebody. We judged a book by its cover because they didn't look how we looked or whatever. Amen. But I'm telling you, everybody deserves to hear about Jesus. Everybody deserves an opportunity for Jesus, amen, to come into their heart and to their life, amen, and turn their life around. Yeah. Yeah. And so anyways, he's, long story short, I hope I'm telling this right. Maybe you all have heard it. But he said, he said, he said, would you forgive me? He said that I've never told you about Jesus, or that I sit here and I didn't tell you about Jesus. And she was looking, if I remember correctly, anybody ever hear his story? Yeah, said, said, I'm going to go down and I'm going to get a Bible right. study from, my, uh, uh, from the outreach center. Right. And said, I'm going to come back and on your break, we're going to sit out there in the park and I'm go we're going to do a Bible study yeah. together and I'm going to tell you about Jesus. Yeah. See, he had compassion. Yeah. You know what? We need compassion. Yeah. Amen. You know what? There, there's, there's Christians in our area. I, listen, there's preachers in our area. Sad to say, I love them. Want to go to heaven with them. But they act like not everybody deserves to hear the gospel. Yeah. They get that Jonah syndrome. You say, what's the Jonah syndrome? Well, God saves Nineveh and Jonah got mad about it. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. It's getting quiet. Listen, when I, if it gets quiet, I get more nervous and I preach longer. <laughs> so anyways... He died forgiven. He died with fervor. But then I thought about this, Brother McLean. Earlier, I was, I was over there in the book of Galatians. And I thought, now you, you might not see this, but I, I, God showed it to me. I, I believe He died with the fruit of the Spirit. Yes, sir. Amen. You say, preacher, I don't see that. Well, in Galatians chapter 5, at verse number 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love. Yeah. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. Yes, Amen. Amen. That He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. Jeremiah 31, 3. He loves us with an everlasting love. Amen. 1 John 4, 19. We love Him because He first loved us. Amen. John 15, 13. Greater love hath no man than this than that a man would lay down a life for his friends. What about Romans chapter number 5 at verse 6? For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man would one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God, He commendeth His love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. 
He died loving us. And then you know what? The Bible says, uh, the Bible says that the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy. You say, you say, do you, you believe, preacher, that Jesus died with joy? Well, the Bible says in Hebrews, let's see, Hebrews chapter 12 says that we're surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of God the Father. Amen. I believe it is a joy dying for you. You say, preacher, how could you? He loves you so much. When he was on the cross, you were on his mind. You can go on down through there. What does it say? The peace. Amen. He gave us peace through it. And then long suffering or suffering long. At any time, he could have stopped it if he wanted. Amen. At any time, he could have called 10,000 angels. I was thinking, Pastor Jeff, in the Old Testament, one angel slew 100,000 in one night. Jesus could have said, that's it. I've had enough. And could have just took and opened up the earth and swallowed everybody. But he, but he showed, what, what's it say? Love and joy and peace and love. Gentleness. He showed it to his mama, showed it to John, showed it to, showed it to all of us. Gentleness. And then what does it say? Goodness, faith. He had faith in the Father. Amen. He, he, he had faith. And, uh, and then I, I think about this. The Bible says... Uh, uh, meekness, you know what that is? That's, that's strength under control. My, my, my. And then it says temperance, and against such there is no law. You know what? He died with the fruit of the Spirit. I want to live with the fruit of the Spirit. I want to live loving others. I want to live uh, with peace. I want to live with joy. I want to have kindness. I want to have meekness. I believe with all my heart, if we live like Jesus died, we'd be a lot better off. He died in fellowship. How many preachers, you all help me. What he said, uh, he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Mother, behold thy son, son, behold thy mother. And then what he say, uh, uh, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. And Eli, Eli, lama sabbatani, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? What he's saying, I thirst. And then there's, there's, listen, some believe one way, some believe another. I personally believe that he said it is finished. And then he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. But some believe that he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. It is finished. But listen, it was finished, not him. He didn't say, I'm finished. He said, it's finished. And even, even when he said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken? He was still in fellowship. Now some people, Brother Jerry, don't believe that. They say, well, he was in fellowship. When he was praying, Father, forgive him. And then he was in fellowship when he said, Father, I'm commending my spirit. But listen, even when, G- even when God had to turn his back on his own son because he could not look upon our sin, he was still in fellowship with God. You said, where do you see that? Because he was doing God's will. He was in fellowship with God the entire time. He was drinking the bitter cup that his father gave him. Listen, are you living life with a forgiving heart? Are you living life with fervor? Are you living life with the fruit of the Spirit? Are you living life in fellowship with the Father? And then listen, He finished His course. He finished His fight. Amen. He went all the way. Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter 4 at verse 6, he said, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I fought a good fight. I finished the course, and I've kept the faith. I'm 43. I don't know how much longer I've got to live. Listen, the rapture could come that quick. I, I might live to be 83. You know, I have... 
Brother Kenny, I have, do, do you and your sweetheart sister, Nett, do you still have like dreams? And I mean like, I'm not nightmares, you know. <laughs> I have them all the time. But, uh, but I mean like, let me, I'll, I'll put it like this. Me and Dawn, we've been married coming April 24 years. Amen. I want to grow old with her. I'd like to know what it's like to get matching jogging suits. <laughs> Go walk the mall in the morning. Go to IHOP, get the senior special. So far, even Biden hadn't messed that up. For $3.99, that's two eggs any way you want them. That's three strips of bacon, hash browns, hallelujah, and five fluffy pancakes. <laughs> and you can get maple syrup, blueberry syrup, strawberry syrup. What I like to do is take the pancakes and have one syrup with each one. <laughs> hey, man, listen, that's living. It touched my heart. It always tugs at my heart when I see Brother Ernie and Sister Debbie. Man, I, and I want to be all right, Sister Debbie. I wouldn't hurt you all or make you mad for nothing. But I thought to myself, Brother Ernie, when you said there will be a day. See, you all remind me of my grandparents. Done everything together. I mean, my, my, the only thing my papa did by himself was deacon's meetings. And the only thing my grand grandmother did was women's auxiliary. They done everything together. You all maybe not know about pals in this area, but we have a restaurant in our, in our home called Pals. Amen. And they got, hey man, they got <laughs> hot dogs and Frenchy fries. And my mom and papa would go every Friday and they'd get out these little plastic trays from the trunk and they'd get a hot dog apiece and they'd get a large Frenchy fry and divide it between the two of them and get a Pepsi. And they'd have dates every Friday. Saturday morning was time for Hardy's biscuits and gravy. <laughs> and as they got older and as I got older, at one time I said, Mamma and Papa, I'll come with you to Hardy's one Saturday. Papa said, no, that's our time. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a wife and children now. <laughs> We're cutting you off. <laughs> they, was married, they was married 64 years. We always said, Mamma can make it without Papa. Papa couldn't make it without Mama. Or Papa couldn't make it without Mamma. Mam or, uh, yeah, Mamma can make it without Papa, but Papa couldn't make it without Mamma. And when Brother Ernie was talking about the two of them, how long they've been married in 54, I said, Lord, just let the rapture come. Amen. I would not want to hear, Sister Nett, Brother Ernie saying, My wife has passed. And I would not want to hear Sister Debbie say, My my Ernie has passed. Amen, but I thought, Mom, I was sitting right there and I thought, man, that's, that'd be, whew, I don't even want to think about it. Now, I tell you right now, and Brother Jeff, I've told you about my funeral if I die. And, but I, you know, Don can make it without me. I couldn't make it without Don. Amen. I tell her that all the time. Now, I pray that just the rapture will come, but you know what? I'm, I'm planning. Now, I'm planning as if I'm going to live another 30, 40 years. You know, I, one day I may never get to drive a car. I may never trade. The next thing I'm going to get is a high-powered hover round. Because <laughs> unless God does something great and miraculous, and by the way, He's still great no matter what. <laughs> But I'm, I might have one of them one day. Dry. I mean, Don took us up to the ark a while back and to the uh, creation museum, and I had to drive a, a cart around, and and uh, not no shame in that. But I don't know. Amen. <laughs> I don't know how. <laughs> I don't know how, amen. <laughs> that, led, that, that gave me a thought in a minute, but amen. I'm going to behave. I'm, I'm, listen, and I'm closing with this. I feel like God's done with me. I'm planning on if I'm going to get to be an old man, but I'm prepared as if Jesus is coming back before his service is over. Amen. 
before, before I even dismiss in prayer, before whoever comes to get a song of invitation, before they even get the first word out, Jesus could come back. But until He does, I want to live for Him. He gave His very best. I want to give my very best. He died for me. I want to live for Him. When you see a picture of death, I see a pattern for life. One day, Brother Jerry, I pray that one day I'll get to enter in to heaven and hear well done, good and faithful servant. I want to hear well done. I want to hear weep not. And I want to hear welcome home. How many is with the preacher tonight? With every head bowed, every eye closed. Whoever's got the song, I'll, I'll invite you all to come. Lord Jesus, we love you. Lord, I hope I've done what you've asked me to do. I've tried to be obedient. I've tried to be sensitive. We've laughed a little bit. And, but Lord, I, I just want to stay pleasing in your sight and obedient to what you'd have us do. Lord, my prayer is that everybody here has been saved washing the blood of the Lamb, that they all have a personal one-on-one -on -one relationship with Jesus. And Lord, that we could all leave here tonight saying, you know, He died for me. I'm going to live for Him. Lord, we could all get closer. Every day I rededicate my life to You because I can do more for You tomorrow than I did today. I can be a better servant on Saturday than I'll probably be tomorrow. Lord, help us be forgiven. Maybe somebody needs to do some forgiving tonight. Lord, help us to have fervor. Help us to have that fruit of the Spirit. Lord, help us to live in fellowship with the Master. And if we'll live in fellowship with the Master, we'll have fellowship with one another. Lord, help us to finish well. When we get to the end zone of life, Help us to finish well. Lord, I've preached what you've laid on my heart. I've said I, everything I believe you've wanted me to say and probably been some times that I said something you didn't want me to say. But, but Lord, this invitation's yours. You do the drawing, you do the helping, you do the saving. I can't do nothing. It's all you. So Lord, have your will and way. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll get right in here and pray with you. Come on, this altar's open tonight.
tonight it can be
If you know it, you ought to sing it. Hallelujah. With my Nothing like knowing it's well. I'm glad I go home tonight and go to bed. And I'm glad I can sleep. Because I know that if I don't wake up in the morning, I might say goodbye here, but I'll say hello over there. That's my heart's desire. Praise the Lord. I'm glad I know it. If you're leaving this service tonight and you don't know that peace, you can know him tonight. I believe the altar call has been sufficient. See, God's a gentleman. How many enjoy the service tonight? Hallelujah. You can give the Lord a hand. That's nothing wrong with that. Praise God. Appreciate the good word of God. I appreciate uh, Brother Nathan. You continue to pray for him and lift him up to Jesus. Uh, Brother Larry, uh, is it is it okay to announce your revival? What? Tell me the dates again. September eighteenth. September the eighteenth. Uh, Brother Nathan will be at the Bethel Free Will Baptist Church and uh, revival. September the eighteenth. So go and be a part of that revival meeting. Okay. All right. As we dismiss tonight, thank you for being in again in God's house. Remember, in the morning, we've got Brother Noah Davis to be doing the preaching, Brother Jeff Burchett uh, from the West Court Baptist Church, and then, of course, tomorrow night, Brother Joe Arthur uh, from uh, Harvest Baptist Tabernacle there in Jonesboro, Georgia, will be with us tomorrow night, all right? The Parsons family will be back, but I think in the, you're having to leave after the morning service. Is that correct? The Joy Irish will be back with us in the morning, but they'll be more leaving after the morning service. How many enjoyed the singing and the preaching tonight? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, each one that's been on the altar. God bless you. Now, you that's done plan to lay out tomorrow morning, and y'all's done plan to not come back tomorrow night, the steakhouse don't have nothing. Amen. And your groceries could wait till Saturday morning. Yeah, All God people said. Because I'm telling you, if you miss it, you're going to miss a blessing. Right. Amen. Come back and let's, let's go and set, put, set our feet under the table of God. Amen. Amen. All right. And it's good to have, again, uh, uh, Brother Charles and Abigail. Is that right? David. Amen. And, and their family with us. They'll be with us in the morning. Praise the Lord. I'm glad, I'm glad they're visiting with us. Missionaries of India, praise the Lord for that. Give God the glory. Uh, every church and everybody that's really bad, our folks that are going home, you've outdid yourself. Hadn't they fed you good?
Just lean on his arms. I'm running.